Welcome to another video, another shoot. Uh, I'm glad today we have a quorum. Uh, we are discussing a very pertinent topic, uh, which probably you have seen a debate about on the, on the internet. And the question we're asking ourselves is, is Islam a religion of peace? Um, most of you might answer, why are we not asking ourselves, why is, is Christianity a religion of peace? Or why is Buddhism not a religion of peace? Uh, and I will give you a simple answer. If it is based on the current happening in the world, if we discuss if Christianity is a religion of peace, that will be an academic exercise. If we discuss Buddhism as a religion of peace, that might not be academic exercise based on what is happening in Myanmar. But is Islam a religion of peace? I think that is a question that is very pertinent, especially with the current situation in Israel and Gaza, Afghanistan, whatever. So we want to explore this question, understand whether it's a, a religious question, whether it's a geopolitical question. Uh, and uh, so that's it. So what is Islam? Islam is, of course, the second most globally. It has about almost 2 billion people, followers. It's projected by 2050, Islam is going to overtake Christianity and become the majority religion. Uh, so, of course, we know there are two main sects of uh, Islam, Sunni, Shia, and mostly they, they both follow Quran, but they have different uh, hadiths. The, uh, the main difference is the question who should have taken over from Muhammad died. Some people believe it should have been, um, I think Sunni believe that it should be the son and the, it should be like a monarchy. Uh, but the one who actually took over is a friend who is uh, like a senior elder, so who are now family related. And that is where they the, the separation came from. Uh, we know they follow Quran. Quran is the holy book, is the Bible of Islam, and uh, they have Hadith, which are also secondary, but very important. We have Sunnah. Sunnah are normally like what people write about Muhammad. They are people who are with Muhammad. What, they, what did he say? What did they say? They are not biding, but they are like stories about Muhammad. Uh, so what is controversial about Islam? Number one is the character of Muhammad, and number two is the character of Quran. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things we quarrel about mostly with Muslims when I'm debating them is about uh, like the wives of Muhammad. They are very controversial. He had, I think, about over 10 wives. And uh, one of them, of course, the famous one is Aisha. It's Khad Khadija is the most famous one because she was like many years older than Muhammad. Then there was Ka Aisha, who was six year old, nine year old. You know how the story goes. Uh, but I don't know why people overlook uh, the other wives like uh, Rahian bint Ziyad and Maria. Both of them were slaves. Like uh, Rahiana was a slave who had been, from, was a Jew actually, but the tribe had been conquered. And then the, the, in Islam, yes, you are allowed now to take, if you conquer a community, you are allowed to take the wives. Which is exactly like what the Bible says in numbers, I don't remember the number, like go and kill them and take the virgin among them. Uh, yeah, the one who are virgin among them. Uh, Maria, Maria was a gift for, to Muhammad. So uh, the king of Alexandria, modern day Egypt, gave Muhammad uh, the time, at that time several slaves, women. And uh, one of them happened to be Maria and her sister. And what Maria did is, uh, Muhammad did is, she started quote unquote cheating, let's use the word cheating, with Maria. And the other wives were very angry. But then he promised them, I'm not going to marry her. It was just an event. He was, it's a very funny story how he was caught. And then he said, and then eventually she got pregnant and they ended up being married. Uh, so that is it about Islam. Now, um, I have very two, three, four, five controversial verses, but I think I'll read them, uh, I'll brief them after the question. I have three questions for you guys. Uh, I'm going to ask the first two together so that we can save time. And then I'm going to ask the third one question. So we are talking about religion. Is Islam a religion of peace? So we have to understand what we mean by religion of peace. Because I'm sure everyone of you has heard, like, if, if you're a Christian, and people say, ah, the Bible says that, but that is not Christianity. That is misinterpretation. Ah, that one you're pulling it out of context, you know. So, and Islam, they also have the same. You know, you'll say, a controversial verse, they say, that's not actually the it was meant. And then Muslims also have a, a secret weapon that Christians don't have. If you beat them with facts, they revert to Arabic, and of course they <laughs> they bring language barrier. You are talking nicely in English, and then 
Malala Walakbara then. <laughs> so, apart from, so the question is, what do you mean by religion of peace? Is it what people do? Because you can look at Muslims in Kenya. I think 95 percent of 90 something percent, even 99 of Muslims, they are peaceful people. So if you judge by people's action, we're going to say religion, Islam is a religion of peace. Uh, or are we going to judge by what some scholar says? Or are we going to judge by what the holy text says? And this also boils to the question, what is Islam? Is it the people or is it the, how do I become a Muslim? I become a Muslim if I believe in the Quran and everything it says. So I don't want to give you the answers, but what do you mean by a religion of peace? Or is it the people? Is it the doctrine? Is it the holy text? Is it the action of the people? What is it? And number two, in your own question, assuming you, uh, do you think Quran, the little you might have heard about Quran, because I, I don't expect you to be very conversant with it, do you think it actually advocates for violence? Or it's what we hear from most uh, Muslim apologetic, it's some few radical elements that misinterpreted for their own political whatever, violence, mm -hmm. to cause violence. Mm -hmm. So those are the two questions. Do you think it's a religion of peace? What do you mean by a religion of peace? And do you think Quran itself advocate for violence? Uh, from my perspective, or from my little knowledge about the knowledge I have, I can say that Islam is not a religion of peace because they don't tolerate other religions. They, they accept that if anyone contradicts their religion, he or she deserves to be killed. And can that is written in the book of, from the Quran, the book of Surah, chapter 2, verse 103. It says, and I can read, Fight against them if they persecute you, until there is no more persecution, and your devotion will be to Allah alone. Meaning, they don't accept any other religion apart from their Islam and their Allah. So, if you can't listen to my religion, you can't listen to my opinion, and you are ready to kill me if I, if I have my different opinion, how is it peaceful? Let me, let me ask a question. Um, do you think that's also applies to Christianity? Because I think I can get similar verses in the Bible. Yes, to Christianity is the same. So, in, There is a verse in the Bible, I'll confirm it later, mm. which accepts that you should kill people who are not who, who are the foreigners who should be killed. Yeah, to emphasize on the same point, uh, there is a verse that says, fight against them if they persecute you until there is no persecution and your devotion will be to Allah alone. If they stop persecuting you, there will be no hostility against the aggressors. So these people, they, they, they want everyone to be on Allah's side of which we don't know as Christian, as a, uh, like I grew up as a Christian, I didn't have the same, uh, the same, the, the same view, the same belief about uh, of which uh, Islam have. So I don't think uh, Islam is a peaceful re religion because I also have friends that are. Um, or to a KDF, and they and they tell us and they to, they tell us that while they were to a KDF, they have like when they are going to call, to to bomb other people, they have things that they are protecting, wanna protect their private parts, so that when they go when they go to get killed, when they go to heaven, they will meet the seventy two virgins. For which I think God is a misogynist banner. I surely, how can he be, be, be supportive of men going to heaven just to have sex? Seriously. Yeah, how? Sex is supposed to be an earthly, um, an earthly, an earthly what? An earthly want. Why would they want to go to heaven and meet 72 virgins? And for crying out loud, they are virgins. It's painful to, to lose your virginity as a girl. Talking as a girl, it's painful to lose your virginity. Why would God want you to go to heaven while you are virgin? So that you can wait for a man who is on earth. A man who is on earth. Not even him as God. 
I feel so mad about this. Why would you wait for a man who is on earth to come to heaven and have sex with you? Not even you one as a person, 72 of you. So these it's people... A it's a reward. <laughs> Seriously, how can this be a reward? This is using women like... This is sexism. In its bio, in its in its what I don't even have words. Yeah, in its worst form, Bana. How can you go to heaven just to? I want to go experience heaven. Like this friend of mine, Niwa KDF, and they used to be bombed kwa barabara when they were they, they were using Sudan to come to Garissa, then to come to Nairobi. This guy was telling me that. And then when you go to see that person, I'm ever protective things. Who kuchini? Surely. Does God really need sex? This sex is supposed to be for humans, for me as a man, for them as a human. I thought God, when God only to create for what? I, I, I think I feel so mad because did God create, us for, did, did God create women for sex? Uh, you'll Thank ask you. him on the last day. I will start with question number one. What do we mean by a religion of peace? Do we gauge a religion's peacefulness based on the actions of its faithfuls or on its holy text or both? And I think my answer is the, last, the latter, both. You look at the actions of the individuals who follow that faith, and you also look at what their holy text says. Granted, not all Muslims are violent. Yeah, not even all Muslims, but the majority, maybe over 90% of Muslims are peaceful. That is a fact. We are surrounded by friends, by family members who are Muslim. We'll, we'll give them that. However, of the few that are violent, the majority, a disproportionate amount, happen to be Muslim. There was a Pew research that was done among several countries around the world, and it was established that the countries where Islam is the predominant faith, they overrepresented the number of people that engaged in suicide bo bombing or jihadism for that matter. Almost 90% of people who are suicide bombers happen to be Muslims. It's not a coincidence. Some people justify that by claiming that that's a fringe group that have given an extremist interpretation of their holy text. And I contest that. That is a lie. Their holy text itself explicitly states that they need to ex exercise jihad on non-believers. If they preach to you and you reject the faith, then they have been given that commandment to punish them. So their holy text endorses it. Aside from jihadism, there's the problem of intolerance towards people that question the faith or those that leave it. If you look at a number of countries around the world that describe this, themselves as Muslim, like Saudi Arabia, it is the headquarters of Islam. Almost 95% of the people in Saudi Arabia happen to be Muslim. So in that country, there is the death penalty for apostasy. If you leave the faith, you could be sentenced to death. Iran does the same. Again, the, the same figures are represented. Iranians are predominantly Muslim, and they will kill you for leaving the faith. That's why atheists in those countries are the most courageous individuals on earth, and they are putting their life on the line. Can you tell me that that is a religion of peace? Absolutely not. Their holy text endorses violence. The majority of people that are violent in the name of religion happen to be Muslim. And lastly, I will leave you with their founder, Muhammad, the prophet, the last prophet, they claim. He happens to also be a very violent person. If you look at his story, he conducted about 65 campaigns 
violent campaigns against various tribes around him. So if their role model himself is violent, how can you tell me that they too are not violent? For me, as I was looking about the Quran, it is divided in many parts. And it is according to what the Islamic religion were developing. In the first, the Muslims were very few. So the Muhammad gave the order by saying, don't fight them if they are more than you, but try to make peace. So and Muslim can use that part to, to say the Quran is for peace. Then it reached a next point. They say, if they are less, or if you can be able to see they are less than your number, or the number when you multiply by 10 are less than you, you can fight them. For example, one Muslim is supposed to fight 10 people. So if they are 11, don't fight them because you are fighting a losing battle. But if they are 10 and below, you can be able to win them. Allah will help you to, to fight them. But if they are more, either make peace or learn from them. But initially it was, you can also be a slave to them if they are more than you. But in this time, because there are 10 and below, you can fight them. So that is why you can find you can find a verse of peace in Quran when the Muslim was starting, and you can also find a, a verse of violence when they were outnumbered. Even like now, I heard the another leader of Muslim Imam saying there will a time will come they will conquer the whole world. In that time, they will force anyone who will not believe in Islamic to become slave and to give. They are uh, to give taxes to them. They force them as a slave. That is what, and that is the main agenda of the Quran, of Quran of Muhammad. That is how he started. So, if for example, in the Quran, chapter 80, 80 verse 39, say, "Fight those unbelievers until they believe in Allah, until they worship Allah." So, when you find somebody who is not worshiping Allah, you are supposed to fight him or her. Until see, obey and accept to worship Allah. But if it does not, either you slave them or you kill them, according to that chapter eight verse that nine. So uh, the Islam, you may find some excuse because, for example, I was arguing with my colleague. I think it's last month, but one he claimed that you don't know Quran. I asked him why, because Quran is written in Arabic. In that case, I told him. I don't know Bible. He asked me why. Because Bible was not written in English. Or Kiswahili was written in Greek and in Hebrew. So in that case, it means we know nothing. We don't know even the other languages. You cannot be able to speak English or Kiswahili because you are not born in that language. So that is a very stupid argument or excuses. So it means we cannot even learn science. We cannot know how microwave work or how electricity work because the person who say about electricity he did not say with in, in English. He say in his own language. Then it is translated to English. I want to look at it from a different way. In my opinion, the peacefulness of a religion is demonstrated by its extremists, because the extremists usually are the people who have the purest interpretation of the religion. They take the book literally, in every sense of the word. So, Christian extremists, Muslim extremists, and extremists, Buddhist extremists, actually demonstrate the peacefulness of any of their religions. It's the people who take their books as the absolute truth and take them literally. As, 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 opposed to, as opposed to the liberals who interpret in the books. So here I'm looking at a person who is going to say, a verse which says, behead a homosexual, is actually going to take it as it implies, behead the homosexual. Whereas the, most of the people will interpret it as, that was an agreement made maybe by the old days, and now doesn't apply to us. So the, the later people are good in spite of their religion, not because of the religion. So, if you look at religions in general, one of the most peaceful religions 
is the Jainists. And the only, one of the ways you see that they're the peaceful religion is by looking at their extremists. Their extremists will not even kill an ant. Jainism itself, some of the adherents will do, will walk around, they'll kill ants, or yes, they may eat, they will look at plants, I think, but the extremists in Jainism will do anything to avoid any violence to life. That shows you what the religion is about. The extremists in Islam, on the other hand, will almost do anything to create violence. And that demonstrates the basic fundamental problem with that religion. So and who, who is a real Muslim? The one who follows it literally or the one who interprets it? I will not go into the argument of who is a real Muslim. Because a real Muslim, by definition, depends on the person saying it. Okay, what is Islam? Again, it depends on the school of thought you follow. Because uh, every school of thought looks at Islam in a different way. All of them interpret Islam in a different way. But ultimately, it's the people who apply the literal meaning of their books who demonstrate the actual intended religion. Fact is, societies change, people change, our moral outlook on life changes. And because of this, we start interpreting things that we see as moral in our holy books and reinterpret them to look more <coughs> suitable to our current moralistic systems. Which is why it's actually something closer to 99% of the Muslims are peaceful. And they are peaceful in spite of their religion. However, because they support the extremists among them, mm -hmm. they are also responsible for the violence that comes from the extremists. They do not condemn them, they do not prevent them and sometimes they protect them. So on that basis, much as they themselves will not go out and kill the infidels, they will protect those who will kill the force. They may even support them in monetary terms, weapons terms, to, for the guys to go and kill the infidels. So they are complacent, yes, but they also are partially, res not partially, fully responsible for the violence that is done in their name. So in that basis, I would look at it that, yes, Islam is not a peaceful language. However, I may also add, there are very few peaceful religions in the world. Because if you take any, come to that, yeah. if you take any religion to its extreme, if you take it literally, most of these religions are very violent religions. And they stem from one basic, let me call it a basic principle. The principle is that everybody else is wrong and we must make them see the right. In fact, yeah. they, I wanted to ask you a question on interpretation. Huh? Mm. Um, I think the audio is okay. So I wanted to ask you a question on interpretation. Uh, I wanted to ask you a question on interpretation because I want to take an example and this you can even use the Bible, slavery. So you're saying is about interpretation and looking at the times like we're in modern times so your argument would sound like people in 500 years ago who supported slavery were living in a time when slavery was the norm. It's like keeping a cow today or keeping a, keeping a goat. In future, people might condemn us for keeping a cow because how are you putting a cow in a shed and a fall, whatever. So in the context of that, that means then it was acceptable. Now we know slavery is not acceptable. So we should interpret it in, uh, according to the context of today. That's your argument, right? No. Actually, my argument is almost the exact opposite of that. If you are to call yourself a Christian, then you must follow the Bible. To the latter. To the latter. Any changes you make in the Bible imply that you're moving away from Christianity. Do remember that, uh, I think it was Jesus himself who said, mm. not one word shall be removed from this. Yeah. Yes. Or added. Notice John in Revelation says, he who adds or removes a word from this, uh, from this book, so the exact, I can't quote the exact verse, but it's the answer that he who adds or removes from this book shall be condemned by God. So, in actual fact, most people, most Christians right now, if we follow the Bible, 
will be condemned by God because they are adding and removing from the book. So in that context, with now to Quran, there are Bible, there are Quran verses that support slavery explicitly. Yes. They don't even imply. Yes. So when you are looking at the debate of today, which is what is a true Muslim? Is there the one who follows that text? Because a Muslim, in my own definition, is someone who is guided by Quran. Quran is what defines a Muslim. If you follow and believe in everything Quran says, you are Muslim. If you don't, be, if you believe in some part, you are not a true Muslim. And I think Muslims will agree with, with me on that. So, does should a Muslim in today's context, a true Muslim or someone who we can just recall, colloquially define as a Muslim, believe in literally in that verse that says slavery is okay? Or you can I'll, have sex with your female I'll, slave because that is explicit. I'll there. put it this way. If you're unwilling to follow each and every precepts of the book you claim to believe in, then you should not belong to that religion. So I asked you the question of the day, is Islam a peaceful religion? No. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, to, to add on to what my fellow colleagues have said about extremist, uh, extremists, the Islamic extremists, uh, I want to talk about our country, Kenya, here now. And ever since I was born to, in this uh, country, there are like five, uh, the five, five tragic events that have ever happened that have been caused by humans, you know, leave alone the things that are out of our control, like COVID or maybe the flood, the things that are caused by, by natural disasters. You're leaving alone that. You are now talking about tragic events that have been caused by man, that by, by humans themselves you can the first one you can talk about the bomb blast in 1998 the second one uh the 2007 post-election violence there is the 2013 westgate attack there is the 2015 mo university in garissa the attack and the 2019 Dusit hotel uh, uh terrorist attack out of those five four of them were caused by the islamic extremists out of those five and i'm not someone who who, who takes a word by uh, uh, who takes something from word but from actions and those actions they clearly don't imply that uh, islam can, um, islam can be a religion of peace because it's not what Semakula spoke about or the exchange that they had made me realize there's one particular elephant in the room when you have a topic like this one, is Islam a religion of peace? It insinuates that there's something they have done which has challenged the description that they are peaceful. Among us here, there are some people who have opted out of the video shoot because they were afraid of the topic. They were saying, you want us to talk about Islam? <laughs> we will be targeted by missiles. <laughs> of course, it's an exaggeration, but there's a lot of fear around criticizing Islam. And the reason is they have been very aggressive and violent towards people who criticize it, including the example of the journalist, the Dutch cartoon that drew Prophet Muhammad. If you say anything negative against their holy figures, you will become a, a target by the Muslim violent extremists. So if this was really a peaceful religion, and if the tenets that they followed were true, why would God need people to do his bidding for them, for him, and uh, why would they need to resort to physical means to do it? Why is God letting human beings fight for him? He should actually fight for himself. So I just had to bring that aspect out and show that there's a lot of fear around criticizing them. And uh, that shows you that they have done something to warrant that kind of attitude towards them. I don't think I don't think Islam is a religion of peace and uh, I'm basing my argument on how they treat women. Mostly if you go to countries like Turkey, dare you get married if you're not a virgin, dare you. Yeah. You, you will be in for it and then sometimes 
even down here in Mombasa, I had someone said, I had someone said that most women at the coast who are Islams, when they go to give birth, they risk like kumia because some of them have now resorted to using the anal hole for sex because they w- they don't want to get married if they're not virgins when they're not virgins that is so i really doubt if islam is a religion of peace uh okay v- violence comes in various forms and uh, it's not only through suicide bombing for the extremists uh, firstly, I can say that the first g- the grandfather of violence is uh, Muhammad himself by marrying a minor. That was the first violence. Uh, like in the beginning, uh, Maurice talked about uh, different uh, types of Muslims. We have uh, Shias and Sunnis. Even though the Shias are somehow liberal, uh, both are Muslims. And uh, generally, Muslims are violent. And like I said, because violence is not uh, one-sided, even you look at the laws, uh, because they borrow their laws from the Hadith and the Quran, they get the, the idea of the, the way their culture is to be from, from the two, Quran and the Hadith. And when you look at, for example, the stipulation about the mode of dressing, for example, some men are not allowed to wear specifically, uh, let's say, tight clothes, their mode of uh, shaving their hair. And the same also applies to, to women. They have specific. They, are, they have specifications now to dress. That alone is a is a is a is violent. Uh, we can go to. We can give examples from some, some countries such as Afghanistan. Women. There's uh, women are not allowed to attend, to go past uh, secondary school. Even the mixing between the two genders is a problem. That is a. That's also a violence. So generally, what I can say is that uh, Islam is uh, is not a religion of peace somehow we seem to be in agreement but there's one thing i think we are more in agreement is that a religion of peace or even a community of peace or uh, violent is determined by the doctrine uh, we agree that most muslims people are peaceful people in spite as some across put in spite of the quran now if the way i define personal islam is People, uh, a Muslim is someone who adheres to the uh, to the Quran and its teaching. The way I, I, I define a Christian as someone who adheres to the Bible and its teaching, because there are over thirty thousand doctrines of the Christianity, and if they all read from the same book, they all read, they all read from the same same book. So you can't use Catholic to say, ah, this one is the right one and not PCA, and not Anglican, not Baptist. Same case, you can say, oh, Shia are better than Sunni, Sunni are better than the Wahhabis of Saudi Arabia. You can't use that. You have to say what makes a Muslim a Muslim, and that's the Quran. And so my criticism on whether Islam is a good religion, is a religion of peace, is based on what the Quran says, not what the adherents do. Because I think it's a bad book, but most of the followers happen to be good people. Number two, he has said that violence does not just come in the form of bombing. It comes in very different forms. So you might, uh, the misogyny in it, uh, the act of uh, puberty, marriage or, or whatever, those uh, child marriage, all those are forms of violence that may not be direct. So I want to ask the final question, but I want to, I have a problem with some verses that I wanted to, to elaborate here. I like Quran for that, for it's normally my favorite. It's a manual on how to beat your wife. Quran for that divorce says, if a woman is disobedient to you, I have not even written here. I know it manage because I've been debating with this topic a lot. If a woman is disobedient to you, uh, or, number one is like warn her, like give her a warning. Number two, if she still persists, deny her, uh, abandon her in bed. It's normally say deny her conjugal rights. Number three, if she still persists, strike her. Strike her. And now the modern misinterpreters uh, of Quran, they are like, it doesn't mean strike. Actually, I like uh, <laughs> a writer, uh, Zakil Naik, interpretation. Yeah. He says, it doesn't mean like strike, like you should strike with a muswaki. Muswaki is the, <laughs> with a truth brush. You should, you should not leave a mark. You know, the Quran says you should never leave a mark. You know, those kind of, those kind of things. I'm like, when did we now start measuring violence in terms of whether it leaves a mark or not? No. <laughs> That is Quran 434. And that's a verse that they normally avoid. Uh, Quran 538 orders cutting of hands for those who are offenders, for anything, for even feed. Uh, same case as Quran 535. 
Uh, a man can marry a girl who is who has a rich puberty. Uh, so the the order of marriage in Quran is you should marry someone who has reached puberty. If she has not reached puberty, you have to wait for three months. So you can marry a five year old who has not reached puberty as long as you wait for three months before having sex. Um, so of course, and then the other thing that it says is a woman, a man can marry a female slave. A man can have sex with a female slave. In fact, two at least two of Muhammad's women were slaves. Maria and the other one. So the question is, uh, you, uh, in fact, it talks about something that the right hand possesses, which is your female. If you have a fem, if you have slaves, and your female slave, those slaves, the female slaves are your, are your property. You can have sex with them. But if if my wife, as a Muslim, cannot have sex with the male slaves, it's kind of forbidden. So those are some of the verses. There is the issue of uh, superiority of subjection. A woman testimony is half. So if I, if a woman want to call, and this is a big loophole that Islam uses in marriage. So it, the Quran says, and this is Sharia, that a woman testimony, a man testimony, need two women to counter that. Now look at the issue of domestic violence, which is a very big issue in the Muslim community. Most domestic violence anywhere in the world do not happen in front of witness. They happen in the bedroom or in the, in the lock of the houses. So if I beat a woman as a, ma as a man, and a woman goes and complains, the woman needs another wi woman who witnessed that case to counter my heavy. She, goes, she says, he beat me. I say, no, I didn't beat her. She needs to get another woman to counter my, my counter. And that is how they condone. Because otherwise, without that, the sheikh is going to say, ah, you are lying. Then I believe the man because the man evidence is twice. So those are the kind of verses that we are. We are looking at so uh, there are a lot of verses we can have these uh, these verses a lot and as someone said here you can also get equally good verses if you want not to kill someone they are very nice verses if you want to be peaceful ah they are very nice verses but they always have a COVID. Uh, of course it's be, be peaceful be nice to your muslim fellow so the question i'm asking is uh, the other point i want to make before I ask the question is islam is not unique it's not in isolation in fact, the Quran is more peaceful compared to the Bible. It's, it makes, it makes, it makes, uh, Bible makes Quran look like the peace manual. <laughs> it, Bible is so violent. It's, so the question I'm wondering is, if all these, and, and you see Judaism also follow the Bible, but the, the Testament, the Old Testament, eh, the Judaism. So the question I'm wondering is, if Judaism and Christianity are more violent in text, <coughs> Why are they not more violent on the ground? Why are, more, why are more Muslims following a less violent book? Yet on the ground as we look, most of the violence that is happening is coming from Muslims. I have to give a COVID here. We are talking in the year 2023. If we were having this debate in the year 2020, 2050, actually even 20, 19, 1980, sorry, or 1950, we would be saying, why is we would, the debate today would be, is Catholic a region of peace? Because I think they have committed the most violence. So the question we're wondering, what is it that Christianity has done in terms of interpretation, in terms of their whatever, that they are not still doing there? I think the last Christian bombing was 1994, when they were doing IRA in, in Northern Ireland and uh, versus UK. That's when they did the suicide bombing in, uh, in, in Rwanda. Uh, the issue of uh, drawing of cartoon. Why is that are not a problem with the issue of blasphemy against the Bible. Like if you ban a Bible, people are like, ah, that's a stupid man. If you ban Quran, oh, there will be fatwa all over the world, you know. So they, uh, so there is the issue of executing people, you know, all those things. So the question is, why is what is it that Christians have a very violent book, but they seem to be more quote unquote not be adherent to it in terms of violence. Yet uh, Muslims seem to, seem to be. Uh, to me. Is it the age of the religion? Is it the fact that the religion is strict and it's not progressive? What do you think is the problem of, of that? And this is the last question, so you can put it with any other thoughts that you have about this topic. So... Uh, the last Christian terror was on 12 December 2022. I talked about Christian bombing, suicide Christian. bombing, suicide bombing. Oh, suicide bombing, yeah, yes. suicide bombing. But, uh, mm. Terror attacks. If you look at, uh, you cannot look at acts of terror as only suicide bombing. Okay. Yeah, of course. Because any terror 
motivated by religion should be considered as Christian. In this case, if it's Christian, Christian terror. If it's Islam, Islamic terror. Yeah, and, so, and if you are going to look at it from that perspective, I would make an opinion that Islam takes the lead. Buddhism, because of what they are doing in Myanmar, takes number two. Yeah. Okay. Christian takes number three. But that's the question. Why, why is the contradiction? Why is it? What is it? What is it that Islam can run from Christian? That the fact that having a hateful book, they can still be peaceful as most Christians are. Uh, I think to answer Maurice's question. Of course, historically, we have had the issue of crusades, whereby we have conflict between the Christians and Muslims. But uh, in modern times, I think there is a connection, uh, there is an additional attachment to religion. And uh, for the Islam, they have what is called the caliphate. So they have attached the political uh, structure in a way that they want to expand their religion, but in a different way, using political structures. And it's because of the same, that uh, you can see that, for example, in Africa, even the current uh, research suggests that uh, the number of Muslims will be higher. So it's because bec I think it's because of that attachment that uh, people still cling to Islam as a religion. And uh, even though they, they still do so, we have that aspect of violence. It has not gone away. Because, for example, uh, recently we had the issue of Iran, whereby the beautiful girl called uh, about the hijab, I mean, was assaulted. Uh, we, we have morality police there. So in, in, uh, the main idea is about the caliphate, and uh, it is so sad that uh, as they try to expand, they also stick to their... They, stick, they still write in their Quran, unlike Christians, for example, the Catholics, and uh, yes, they, for the Catholics, for example, they still change their doctrine uh, because of the times, because of modern times, because people are awakening. They are coming to question uh, the things that are there present in the Bible, yes, and like the Quran, which tries to stick to the originality of the of it as it was written previously in both the Quran and the Hadith. Uh, on top of that question, because I have some other point, I don't think everybody is going to get a chance to comment. There is the issue of caliphate, which has talked about, which I wanted someone to comment. This is the issue of jizya taxes. I don't know if you guys know what a jizya tax is. So, if you live among Muslim, one of the verses, the, the Quran says you can pay a tax for protection. So yeah, ideally, as an apostate, you should be killed. But if you pay taxes, which is a protection tax, a jizya tax, then it's okay, you, you are not supposed to be. So the, the issue is uh, even people living among ISIS, uh, mostly the, 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 the non-Muslims, if they pay that taxes, which is supposed to be taken to the bomb, then they are supposed to be offered protection. Uh, there's the issue of uh, speaking Arabic. So like if I learn, if I become a Muslim today, I'm supposed to, to learn Arabic. I'm like, if Allah is all powerful, why would he create me a Swahili Kenyan? And then for me to understand his word, which he communicated to me, I have to learn another language. Why not create me an Arab then? So I'll have it as my... So those are the things. And finally, the issue of ex-Muslims. Eh? I think that's a big thing that we are dealing with as a society, actually. Most ex-Muslims, they want only to attend our Zoom meetings. They want to be with us remotely because... The immediate threat they face is from their immediate family. So those are the things I think we can uh, touch touch as we give our final remarks. Well, about the jizya taxes, taxes there is this issue in Kwangai Mekuja about Catholics. They had to take this absolution, absolution, um, I don't know what is, uh, I, I don't remember the name. They were like, You're, if you want to do something, if you want to sleep with an, a minor, you can do it as long as you take an absolution something so that God cannot punish you because you had already taken an absolution service or something it's like, like advanced that. advanced repentance. Yes, it's <laughs> advanced repentance. So if, if you harm... <laughs> a, an, a minor or you do something that goes that does not go with accordance to the to the catholic belief then god is going to forgive you yeah anyway so my point was i have muslim friends and uh, people who are 
they are pagans but they decide i don't want to go for christianity because they feel like christianity restricts them because of the god of the bible punishing you know the god of the bible brought um people to whatever they whatever of noah people no god instructed noah to bring two by two and pe- people were not uh they, they did not support that idea so it was just animals that got into the ark so people as are in support of like this this uh this judea whatever this this muslim thing like if you're not doing this then god is not going to punish you because you did this and you and you asked for protection for like you asked you asked god to forgive you beforehand so if you're going to rape a woman god already forgive you so i think that's the that's the that, that's the most problem i have with christianity because god gives you an absolution method like if i'm going to rape this person if i have this abolition uh, uh, if, if i have absolution then i'm not going to be prosecuted or f- things like that that's why i am for secularism on to on what uh, morris has just uh, talked about of why why are muslims violent and yet the 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 their the, the quran is not is is not even more violent than the the bible but christians of today they are at least they are more peaceful but i can say maybe the reason is because i think there is this competition between uh, this reli- these two top religions of islam and christianity islam are they are trying to overtake the numbers of christians and i think uh, if they do that christians will also try to fight back like the europeans are trying to fight back the the the, the countries like france sweden they are trying to fight but they are trying to drive away those muslims that have have started to to bring up numbers in their their own ca- countries and also the second thing is about uh limiting uh Li- trying to do this by also limiting freedom which i- i- is uh, li- limiting the, the freedom of their own people like uh where i said about the the hijab the the story in, in iran where they are, they have jailed over 20 20000 women because of protesting against wearing of the hijab and also over 2000 have been killed because of of the same the same reason is uh, is is a is a comp- i think it might be because of, of this competition between uh, these two top religions between of christianity and islam which can do, do you think also this, the age is a factor because islam is a young religion compared to judaism and christianity yeah uh, i don't because know if religions age... mature just like wine with time mm. yeah maybe th- that that might, might it might be a factor because uh Christianity I think it's 1500 years older than the, yeah no than it's 500 Islam. years 600 years 500 old. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Islam is 1400 years Christianity is 2023 as we yeah. are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. okay age might also be a factor in mm. that but for me one of in my opinion one of the biggest factors is this competition where I don't know some Muslims they they that trying to 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 bring up numbers that maybe in tw- 2050 mm-hmm. they should have overtaken christianity but that might bring up the christians can also try to fight back okay let me answer your questions in chronological order starting with the first one why is islam more extreme than other religions that have even more radical holy texts like christianity or judaism i think the answer is in their adherence to the text i believe that muslims tend to be more fundamentalist in their interpretation of the text vis-a-vis christians or uh, jews so they take their holy text word for word they are even fuss about the language in which it is written and they keep talking about how the quran was perfectly preserved so because of that i think it eventually leads to a more 
violent religion. Then there's also that element of age. I think with time, we start to evolve our religions. We start to update them as we continue to practice them. We start to see holes in them and then we improve them based on secular principles. In fact, the longer a religion stays around, the more likely that it will update its moral principles, or the more likely it will be, become secular. So Islam always fights secularism. In fact, the reformations that they've had in the past have been in the reverse order. They've made them even more fundamentalist. If you look at the current conflict of the Palestine-Israel conflict that's actually happening at the moment, people are calling it World War III. One of the reasons why it is happening is because of the Hamas who have been fighting with another group, the PLO, Palestinian Liberation Front. And they accused the Palestinian Liber Liberation Organization of being too secular. They are too liberal. They are not interpreting their holy text literally like they are. So I think that is how I would answer that question. On the second one about the tax that one can pay for apostasy, I think this is a testament to how man-made religion is. It creates rules to oppress certain groups and then it creates cop-outs for them that benefit the group in charge. So this is the case with Islam. Now lastly, on my final remarks, and I would also like to speak to the ultra-left who have started coining this term called Islamophobia, that whenever you criticize Islam, then you are being bigoted and you are called Islamophobic. No, you can criticize a doctrine without being bigoted or without discriminating against the people. Islamophobia to me only applies when you deny people opportunities because of their faith, because of being Muslim, or maybe you arbitrarily arrest them because of their faith. But when it comes to criticism, Sizing an idea, no idea, I, I repeat, no idea should be above reproach. And my last word is, for, for, for those Muslims who have stumbled upon this video, a true, a, a, an adhering Muslim is somebody who reads the Quran. But if you read the Quran and understand it objectively, you become an atheist. Thank you. Okay, thank you for those contribute. So, for me, what I will say, I think Muslim, even Christianity, and any other religion, they rely on what they think God say. But my question is, you all know, either you are Hindus, Christian, or Muslim, you know you are God is powerful, is all knowing, He can be able to act any time any place why do you want to take place of your god and fight him back if i do mistake for example let's talk about the homosexual you say homosexual is wrong because your religious book says so but if homosexual are doing against your god why don't you allow your god to come and revenge to come and discipline that person who is acting as homosexual or lesbian why do you want to implement the law to imprison those people or to come to kill that person does it that mean you and god is weak you and god is fake if you and god is able allow him or allow her to come and take his part to come and revenge if i deny if i i denounce i stop to be a muslim why do you want to come to kill me calling me apostate is you and God weak? Allow you and God to come and punish me or to kill me, but not to send you. To say for you to come to come to kill me, it means you and God is weak or you and God is fake. And it, and and to silence people from attacking idea, it means how weak is your idea or how useless your idea is. Because if your idea is good or is strong enough, you could be very confident when the people are trying to attack you to attack those ideas because you can be able
to tell them using those ideas or you can be able to explain to them. But instead of explaining, you are coming to attack. You are coming to threaten people and coming up with the other language called homo homophobic Islamophobic. against Islam. Why do we, we don't have homophobic about the Christians? Islamophobic. Yeah. Islamophobic. Okay. So we need to be very serious as a human. If you are if your idea has been attacked and that idea is not yours, it's from your God. Let your God come and attack us. So in conclusion, uh two things I must say before I conclude. Is Islam a religion of peace? If you define Islam from Quran, no, it's not a religion of peace. If you define Islam from the people, most of the people who follow it, yes, it could be fine a religion of peace. Uh, in most cases, Muslims uh, who follow Quran strictly or fundamentally, as you say, are going to engage in violence merely because they've been uh, they've been taught that in the Quran and Madrasa. But there's something also we must not overlook. It doesn't mean that m Muslims are always the aggressor because that's a very bad connotation. There are instances where the Muslims are suffering a great injustice, as we speak, in this world. One of them is Ham uh, is Palestine. As much as you know, you don't ag I don't agree with Hamas and their mode of operation. It is very bad for a whole place, 2.2 million, 3 million, to be put in like um, an open air, what we call an open air uh, refugee camp, be denied water, be denied thing, and you expect them to live that for years and not uh, and not fight back. Remember, in this country, there was a time Mao was called the terrorist by the Western media. The African National Congress, the biggest terrorist in this continent was Nelson Mandela before they got independence. So people fighting for self-determination, as much as they sometimes don't agree with the tactics, they are being oppressed. People, in, in Muslims in India, especially the area of Kashmir between Pakistan and India, Muslims are being dragged from their homes and being executed. And that is one of the other big injustices that is happening. Uh, Muslims uh, in Myanmar, uh, whatever is being done to them and other minority communities by the, by the majority Buddhist uh, government, I think that's injured. The last one is the Uyghur Muslims. I think this is the most tragic one. The Uyghur Muslims in China, where China is putting them in, put and put, re-education camps. Putting them, and even they have now developed a software where if you are Muslims, even a Christian, you walk around, the police take your phone, they put it in your machine. If they find any verse of the Quran, the machine is able to detect if there's a Quran or anything religious. You are taken and you, are you disappear, you are taken to the education camp. It is, and they have big camps, they have millions of people in those camps. I think as much as I don't think Islam is a region of peace, I think Muslims are people of peace and they should be allowed to. Uh, they should be allowed to be as people because uh, as much as I don't agree with Christians, I don't agree with Muslims, I don't agree with Hindu, I believe fundamentally in their right to practice whatever they want. Finally, conclusions. I want to say this. No monotheistic religion is a religion of peace. None. Time might have changed and Christians are now interpreting this in context or doing whatever they want, but no monotheistic religion is a religion of peace. And number two, I want to remind Muslims, if your religion is a religion of peace, you wouldn't have to keep reminding us. <laughs> you wouldn't have to keep telling us religion, Islam means peace. No, we are a religion of peace. If it will be shown in your actions and the action of your followers. Number two, uh, the funny thing is some, some Al-Shabaab, some, what do you call them in Nigeria, ISIS, Boko Haram, they always say, Islam is a religion of peace. And if you don't agree with this, you're going to rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would say Islam is many things. But there's one thing it's not. It's not a religion of peace. Finally, finally, is there hope for Islam? Is there hope? Is, we are not saying that, uh, is there hope that Islam is going to catch up with Christianity in terms of interpreting their doctrine? So that you can have Quran being interpreted as most Christians in America, Western world would interpret, uh, would interpret the Bible. So yeah, most uh, and that's why I say most Muslims do not practice what is in Quran even today. Most Muslims believe in equal women for rights uh, for women, equal rights for women, and whatever. 
They don't believe you should kill people who live there. It's not even here in Kenya. I've, I've practiced, I've been with Muslims most of the time in my, my, my coast, which is uh, Mombasa is a majority Muslim country, uh, county. It's very tolerant. In fact, most of my best people who treated me were there were Muslims. So what does that speak to? Again, that speaks to the fact that they follow the Quran traditionally, but they adhere to secular morality. It again speaks to the superiority of secular morality. It permits, and you use every part of the society, and you use it whether you know or not, supremacy of secular morality. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe, and more importantly, we like to hear your feedback. So tell us what you think about this video. Thank you very much.